Hello and welcome to another edition of Tough Talk. My name is Medina Azaki. My guest today is a legal practitioner by profession. Um, he's a one-time chairman of the Nigerian Bar Association, Bochi State. He's a one-time attorney general and the commissioner of justice, Bochi State. He's also a one-time National Electoral Commissioner INEC in charge of legal services at the headquarters and currently the Executive Governor of Bochi State and the candidate, the governorship candidate of the APC. Your Excellency Vice Mohammed Abdullah Abubakar, many thanks for joining us on the program. Thank you very much. In 2015, um, in 2015, the general elections, the outcome was more important to Nigerians than the process. In 2019, as the process that is more important to Nigerians, let me congratulate you. You did win at your polling unit about 628, if I'm correct. Mm -hmm. But what is your general impression about the process of the 2019 general election? Uh, I must say, uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, as far as uh, we are con concerned generally in Bochi State, uh, things uh, have gone on very, very fine without uh, any major incident. And coming to uh, the, the processes of elections, I have noticed uh, a marked improvement from uh, 2015. Uh, INEC is more organized and uh, materials got to the polling stations and polling points uh, very early in the morning, uh, in most cases, uh, with the possible exception of a few hitches here and there. And uh, the process of uh, identifying the voter and enabling him to vote, uh, which uh, dovetails into the voting proper, has assisted in uh, decongesting the, the, the polling units. And it makes it very, very easy for someone to come, cast his vote, and leaves the polling station if he likes, mm. or stays uh, to watch proceedings as the case may be. So I think there's a marked improvement from 2015. If you're going to do a general assessment and maybe put a percentage to it, what percentage would you be giving INEC? I do know that there are still reports that will be coming up from international and local observers. And we had crises here and there, some ballot boxes being born, some people killed, especially in the south, south part of the country. If you're going to put a percentage to the performance of INEC mm -hmm. in this election, what, what would that be? Now, outrightly, I'll give them 80%. Okay. Yeah, for the simple reason that uh, if you count the number of uh, states uh, and uh, the polling units where, where we encountered uh, serious problems mm -hmm. all over the, 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 the Federation, you'll discover that uh, in more than 80% of uh, the polling units in Nigeria, uh, proceedings went on very fine uh, without any problems. It's too early to say if your candidate, the president, will win for now because a lot of people said it's a fierce battle. But if he wins at the end of the day, what does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot to me because uh, the APC is the, is the party in, in, in government. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, for the president to win means uh, there's going to be continuity in uh, what the president is doing. And the president is doing a lot, even if... Uh, uh, his detractors uh, will uh, not uh, acknowledge, but he's doing a lot for this country. He may be slow, but he's very deliberate. Uh, whatever uh, he sets out to do may take a little bit of time to, uh, to be achieved, but by the time you achieve it, you discover that uh, it's something concrete uh, that uh, will stand the test uh, of time. So for the fact of continuity alone, uh, it's going to be a very, very welcome uh, development. Do you believe that his own victory will translate into your own victory at the polls? Definitely it will have an effect. Uh, you know, Nigerians, the way we are, uh, there's this uh, bandwagon effect. Everybody loves a winner anyway. All over the world, that's uh, what happens. So uh, should uh, Mr. President win, uh, which uh, is a fact that is definite, almost definite in Bauchi State, mm. uh, win and win with uh, a very, very clear uh, majority. Uh, I think it will have uh, a very good effect on Maori But some election. people believe that Bauchi State is a very peculiar state. The fact that um, a party wins at the president does not mean it will win in the state. Are you not in those fears? No, I'm not. 
uh, on my own. I, 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 I can stand my own uh, because uh, the developmental uh, stride that the state has uh, witnessed over this short period of uh, less than uh, four years, uh, it's uh, out there for everybody to see. And uh, it's not only uh, in, the, in, the, in the urban areas, uh, in all the nooks and crannies of uh, Bauchi State, uh, I have traversed uh, uh, the nooks and crannies. Uh, the, the, the form that my campaign took was not uh, the usual campaign where the governor goes for a rally at the headquarters of uh, the local government and then he returns to the capital. I went deep into the nooks and crannies, some places that uh, in the past I only knew on paper. Uh, now I, I can boast of knowing those places and knowing how my people live and then knowing uh, the kind of needs uh, for uh, those uh, areas. So I, I, I'm confident I can stand uh, on my own. You talked about developmental stride. What are these developmental strides? If you're going to look the, away from the cameras, pretend that these cameras are not focused on your new, yeah. we are not focused on your new, yeah. you're talking to the average Bauchi man on yeah, the street, yeah, and yeah. you're going to beat your chest to him and say, I have done A, B, C, D. What would you be listing as those A, B, C, D projects? The first, which you cannot put a price to, yeah. is peace and security. From the time I have taken over to date, Bauchi has become the safest in, in the most peaceful in the northeastern sub-region and in fact one of the most peaceful and the safest in Nigeria as a whole. There is no way you can put a price to that and uh, that is the bedrock uh, of every development. Without peace nothing can happen. Uh, I, uh, we thank the Almighty Allah for giving us the wherewithal to ensure peace and security in our state. Then if you go to the sectors uh, the various sectors. Take, for example, education, which is the bedrock uh, of any development in any society. When we came on board, uh, education was in tatters. But by the time we took over, we, 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 we made a deliberate effort. I, I set up uh, a committee of experts under the former deputy governor. They, they produced a blueprint for us. And we started following this blueprint religiously. I am not talking in terms of uh, 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 rebuilding or constructing uh, classrooms. Mm -hmm. That is important. The learning environment is very, very important. But in the past, what other governments missed was the teachers themselves that need a retraining uh, in, 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 in the modern methods of teaching mm -hmm. and then the welfare of those uh, teachers. So, Taking the two together, improving the learning environment by constructing brand new classrooms, by renovating mm -hmm. uh, dilapidated classrooms and supplying all the needed uh, uh, desks and uh, learning materials, and then retraining of the teachers, which we took as a deliberate policy. We, we sent uh, 50 teachers to NTI in Kaduna when we came on board. Mm -hmm. uh, they were taught uh, the arts of teaching, uh, training the trainer, that, uh, 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 that was what it was uh, called. And then they came back and then we now started retraining the bulk of the teachers. What that has translated into is that in 2015 when we took over, the percentage success in the basic examinations of WAEC, NACO and NAPTEP was 3.5%, dismal 3.5%. By 2016, we were able to raise it to 17.6%. Mm. By 2017, we took it to 28.7%. Today, last year, 2018, mm. we took it to 38%. And that is the way to measure success in that uh, field. Okay. But how would you react to those who said, um, I don't know exactly um, the, the, the numbers, but that Bauchi State has the highest number of out-of-school children. Is it that is true? true? Is it correct? It is not true. It is not true. Mm -hmm. There was uh, a UNESCO report uh, that was compiled at the peak of the insurgency when IDPs were trooping into Bauchi State. Mm -hmm. From that time to now, no other study was conducted, but the federal ministry of uh, education. Uh, recently, the federal, uh, the Minister of Education came to the National Executive Committee and gave a report on education. And 
there is a clear indication that uh, those numbers are not true. We don't have 1.3 million people out of school. In fact, the school feeding program assisted a great deal in getting a lot of uh, uh, pupils who are otherwise out of school to go back uh, to the school. So, and uh, those numbers are, are, are improving by the day. Also in 2018, that's according to the National Bureau of Statistics, Bauchi belonged to the most, the most 10 poorest states in the country. 10 so, most poorest states, yes. Um, so, and you belong to that group. Uh, yeah. I think you're number eight on that list of one to 10. Mm. So how much would you say you have fed in charge of, in, 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 when you talk about human development and economic empowerment? We, we, we have done a great deal uh, in, in those terms because uh, the moment uh, we came on board, uh, we revitalize uh, our outfit uh, that takes care of uh, the welfare of women and, 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 and youth called Basi Ward. Uh, we appointed uh, a new uh, executive chairman to that uh, outfit and appointed a new board and they revitalized the strategies. We started uh, uh, empowering youth and women uh, and various other uh, organizations, some of them private, uh, were also assisted you know, in the uh, empowerment of women by teaching them skills uh, and then setting them up after teaching them the skills. And then uh, uh, various programs of uh, uh, the federal government of Nigeria, the, the social investment program, have assisted a great deal. Uh, the school feeding program, for example, has uh, brought a lot of uh, uh, resources into the state and uh, in the process uh, uh, has empowered uh, quite a number of uh, people. It, it, it has a multiplier effect. Mm. The, 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 the women who are doing the catering, uh, I know for a fact that some of them, before the advent of that program, could not even feed twice in their homes. But by the time that program started, they were able to take care of the problem of feeding. They so your government, in essence, is relying solely on the school feeding no, program no, no, to no, boost no. the education. No, no, standards. no. I said I told you about ours. Mm. I told you about Basi Ward. Mm. Basi Ward is there. Uh, Basovka is there. Mm. Uh, what Basovka has done, Basovka is uh, the agency for orphans and vulnerable children. Mm. You know, we 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 have what no other state has uh, in Nigeria. We have a technical college that is dedicated to orphans and vulnerable children. And what we do with these orphans is, is not just taking care of them and training them, but we take care of their caregivers. And in the process, we are empowering these uh, caregivers. We do so many things for the caregivers, including providing them with uh, accommodation. You know, so we are doing our own, but I, I said in addition to that, mm -hmm. the social in investment program, which we keyed into. We are Nigerians, it is meant for Nigerians. And, so it uh, provided a boost. We, we, it, it gave a, a great boost, and uh, we have been giving kudos all over. The Mr. Vice President has said it several times. Okay. The NPOWER program, for example, when, when, when it started, we, we, we registered the highest, you know. What that means is that uh, resources are coming in and then you are empowering those youth and therefore you are taking away poverty uh, in the, in the, in, in the we, in In the course of our coverage yesterday, we interacted with a lot of people and many of them seem not to be happy with your style of government. They've been saying um, there's no physical infrastructures on ground. Um, why do you think the people of Bochi will want to give you a second term? What I want you to do is take time. In Bauchi, go around. What do you call physical? Mm. You will see roads, modern roads with street lights. Mm. If that is not physical, I don't know what is physical. Mm. If you go to Azare, the uh, uh, second uh, biggest town, you will see the same thing. If you go to Misao, the third biggest town, you will see the same thing. If you go to uh, uh, Itasgat, our local government, you will see a road that starts from uh, Itas, goes to Atafowa, goes to Magaria. If you go to uh, uh, Jamaari local government, you will see a road that starts from Hanafari to Garimba Abani to Dogonjeji. 
If you go to Giyade local government, you'll see a road that starts from Giyade and goes to Basirka in, uh, in Jigawa. If you go to Warji local government, you'll see a road that starts from Warji and goes to Gwaram. If you go to uh, Toro local government, you'll see a road that starts from Mararabaganye to Gwalfada to Bakinkogi. If you go to Das, you'll see a road that starts from Das and ends in Bununu uh, in Tafa Oleo local government. If you go to Ganjua local government, you'll see a road that starts from uh, Kampanung Kutare and goes to uh, Guyaba. If you go to every nook and cranny, any time you see a cream-colored school building with a blue roof is a project of M.A. Abubakar. You go to 19 local governments, you will see brand new primary health care centers that have been constructed by this government, equipped, and quite a number of them, as I was proceeding on uh, my campaign tour, mm -hmm. I was commissioning these uh, health clinics. So out there, if you talk to the urban elite, the urban elite will tell you stories. Mm -hmm. But the bulk of the people live in the rural areas. What is your blueprint for, for your second term? My blueprint you for my second term is uh, to... And what is your campaign agenda? For to your com term? complete the projects I have, that I have started. Mm -hmm. And then uh, in the process, I develop new ones. I have uh, a, a seven-point agenda that covers all the major areas. And this is what I have been pursuing. In health, I have a five-point health agenda that, call, that is called Lafia Agarqua. And uh, we are uh, succeeding in, 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 in uh, that agenda. So there's going to be continuity uh, in this. And uh, all these projects I have mentioned, not all of them are completed. Quite a number of them are completed. Others are ongoing. The most important thing is that there isn't a single project out of all that I have mentioned that has ever been abandoned from the beginning to now. What is the most important project to you? The most so important far. project to me is health. For the simple reason that, uh, as the saying goes, health is wealth. When you have uh, a healthy citizenry, they will be able to now pursue all the other uh, elements in life. They can acquire education, they can uh, do business and develop themselves and develop uh, the society. Mm -hmm. uh, health was in very, very serious status when uh, I came on board. Uh, it's uh, a work in progress, you know, even now is a work in progress. We've done quite a lot. Mark you, we came at a time when Nigeria overnight lost over 70% of its income. But that notwithstanding, we are able to deliver in all these uh, areas. So now, according to the FRS, at the um, 142nd meeting that he had in your state, um, the FRS boss did say that um, he's commending your efforts for being able to generate um, 7.03 billion from January to September 2018. And now, uh, but if you look at 7.03 billion, it's like a tiny, very tiny drop in the ocean as far as revenue generation is concerned. Would you agree with those who said you've not been creative enough in terms of generating revenue, considering the huge potentials that this state has? No, I don't. I don't agree with them. Uh, they may be from the outside looking in. But if you uh, listen to uh, the words of the executive uh, chairman of the FIRS, uh, we are, at least in the northeastern subregion, the most improved. But you see, the background from which you should look at that is, uh, this is a state that is essentially a civil service state. People rely on the wages of people for uh, civil servants for businesses. There isn't uh, a strong economic base. When we came on board, people, we found our people prostrate on the ground, so to speak. For example, out of every 10 people that may come to you as a high-ranking uh, uh, government official or office holder looking for assistance, eight out of them will be looking for subsistence. Subsistence to feed. All right? So one has to have that at the back of his mind when you are thinking in terms of improving your revenue. I have had two 
uh, chairman of uh, the Board of Internal Revenue since I, I, I came on board. What I have always been preaching to them is improve collection, deploy technology, widen the tax net, but don't impose any new tax on the people because they cannot be it. So people will comment. They will think Bauchi is Lagos or Bauchi is Kanu. We are not. What I did even before I was sworn in, uh, there's a young man who has now contested for the House of uh, Representatives, Mansur Manusoro. I sent him to Lagos, to the Board of Internal Revenue. He collected everything uh, from Lagos. After Lagos, I sent him to Kanu. He went and collected everything. We came and sat down and we studied it. We compared what they are doing with what we have on ground. We now discovered that there are so many taxes that are attractive in Lagos that we cannot uh, levy here. There are so many taxes that are attractive in Kano that we cannot levy here. So this is the background from which people should look at this. Okay. The fact is, it has been identified that we have improved a great deal. Now, going by um, what we see, the GM, the NNPC, and the president, um, you might just be an oil producing state very soon. Um, you talked about the um, government social intervention program, but there's also the agricultural program, which is making waves in many states. I was here in May 2018, um, where there was a seminar on you know agriculture in your state. I was there, I was present there, where I saw some farmers who were saying, and for the first time, they paid their hard fare, you know, without government intervention and uh, but that is not enough or how much effort have you done in terms of investment in the agricultural sector because that's the sector that pulls out a lot of people from you know poverty and then we did hear um, the president of the African Development Bank saying the next billionaires in Africa are going to be farmers well uh, I assure you that uh, we have done a great deal uh, when we took uh, over power uh, we determined for ourselves three major areas of comparative advantage and agri is the first uh, of those uh, three areas and now we set out uh, to approach agriculture from uh, two points one improving the practice for the smallholder farmer who constitutes between 80 to 85 percent of the total population of uh, our state they are arable farmers but unfortunately they have been practicing agriculture the same way they have inherited it from their forefathers. They can turn agriculture into business. It, the smallholder farmer, it's, it's not the size of the farm that matters now in the world. The one hectare that you have, you can improve it a great deal so that uh, you will improve your yield per hectare. So having that at the back of our minds, I, 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 I made a foray to uh, Morocco uh, where I went and met with uh, a company called OCP Africa. OCP Africa is the largest phosphate pro producer in the world and therefore the largest phosphate-based fertilizer producer in the world. Uh, we, 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 we entered into an MOU with them to do three things. One, to improve agriculture for the smallholder farmer. For that, they now devised a program called the School Lab Program. The School Lab Program is, uh, uh, entails a, a, a mobile laboratory that will drive to your farm, take the soil from your farm, mm -hmm. test it for you immediately using the best modern methods and determine for you the best fertilizer to use and the best crops to plant on that soil mm -hmm. for you to immediately improve your yield per hectare. This is ongoing right now as uh, we are speaking. I, 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 I started it uh, for Bauchikano Kaduna uh, at Nabordo. I was the one who, who, who did it. Uh, yeah. I, was, I was the last to come in, but I was the first to, to kickstart uh, the project because uh, the state of readiness of uh, Bauchi State. Two, they, were, they took a look at our fertilizer blending plant, mm. which Incidentally, when we came on board, it was moribund. But we revived it, and that fertilizer plant right now is running two shifts. 
24 okay. hour it's 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 working 24 hours producing fertilizer for not only Bauchi State but for parts of the northeastern uh, sub-region. Okay. Three, they, 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 ha they are starting a program they call Agri-Booster Program. And this Agri-Booster Program uh, entails that uh, they, they have chosen the maize crop. Uh, they will base uh, that program on the maize crop and that is they will improve uh, the yield per hectare for this maize crop for these millions uh, of farmers that we have. On the part of uh, Bauchi State Government, for the first time, we were able to procure 500 tractors. We are commencing a tractorization program because we have realized that for us to be able to attract the youth into agriculture, which you said uh, will be the largest uh, employer of labor, NED, mm. we have to improve on the methods. If you do not remove the drudgery from uh, farming, the youth will not take up uh, farming as a profession. So we, 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 we started a deliberate program where we are bringing in 500 tractors. At Tuango, we received 140. It has never been done in oh, Bauchi yeah. State. All right. Um, you've almost done close to four years in government. Yes. Uh, what are some of the lessons that you have learned? You know, being out of office is different from when you are on the seat. What are some of the lessons that you have learned? Well, I, I have learned uh, a, a, a great deal of lesson. Mm -hmm. But the most important lesson is that I have learned to know and understand the animal called man. The animal called man is a complex uh, animal. Uh, I have seen the good, the bad and the ugly uh, in people. And uh, that is uh, a very great lesson that I wouldn't have been able to learn had I not been in politics and had I not uh, been elected uh, into office. So, but uh, it's still a learning process. Uh, the, the education has not uh, finished. I am still learning by the day. Okay. Um, if you win elections in 2019 in the next election, and for those who want to you know, hold you to account, what will you be telling them that you would do in 100 days, in your first 100 days, and in your first one year in office? First and foremost, uh, like I have done in my first term, I am going to remain true to the oath I subscribe to, particularly knowing that uh, I have done it based on uh, the Holy Quran. Uh, I have resolved from day one to plug all the loopholes in governance, stamp out wastages, stamp out uh, corruption in government. I will still hang on uh, to this principle. And in my first uh, 100 days of office, inshallah, the major projects will be con completed in all the sections of Bauchi State. Mm. And finally, what will be your rigging strategy? Because every politician rigs during elections. So what, yes, what will be your rigging strategy? And if you lose, are you going to accept the defeat or are you going to go to court as a lawyer? Well, uh, let me surprise you by telling you that I do not have any rigging. Uh, uh, <laughs> whatever rigging uh, strategy, I do not uh, have. Uh, if you remember the words of uh, Mr. President, Mr. President has promised to deliver free and fair elections to Nigerians. I subscribe wholeheartedly to that. I, I do not believe in rigging. And like I told you earlier on, I believe any day with a free and fair election, I will win election in Bauchi State, inshallah. So I do not need to uh, have a strategy to rig. When I lose election, I'm a very, very strong believer in uh, uh, the will of the Almighty Allah. And I believe strongly that uh, he gives power to whom he wishes at the time he wishes. He takes away power from whom he wishes at the time he wishes. And I'll abide by that. Right. Your Excellency, that would be a good place to leave it. And we wish you the very best in the next election. Thank you very much. Yes. And that's the show. I've been speaking with His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Bochi State, and Barrister Mohamed Abdullahi Abubakar. Do join us next week for another edition. From me and the whole team here, Medina Azaki. Bye for now.